Oh, good. You're all back. Well, it, um, I may have gotten distracted and done another review before I did the review of this Da Art. Da Art? D A Art. Aquila 2. The 768K DSD DAC headphone amplifier. And I got this unit from Shenzhen Audio, uh, which is a site that I occasionally do, you know, they send me things to review and I link to their site. It's great. And I didn't ask for this. This is one of those things that, you know, sometimes I'll say, oh, people want to know about this. And they'll send it to me and then I'll review it and either send it back or they'll let me put it in the yard sale, whatever. This I didn't ask for. And I'm so glad they sent it. Because I've looked through Hi-Fi Guides. If you don't know, Hi-Fi Guides exists. It helps you pick out things to purchase. It's nice, like, I went to headphone sources. I went, okay, at first I didn't know how much this cost. That's gonna be part of this joy of this thing. I thought it was like $1,200, $1,300 unit. And it's only like seven, which is kind of weird because this is usually the Bargain Basement channel, AKA the Blondes. Um, but for $700, there's basically only one option I currently have on Hi-Fi Guides for a combo DAC amp. And that's a Topping DX7 Pro. And there's nothing wrong with the Topping DX7 Pro, except it's been usurped now by the A90 and P90 toppings. And I'll link to those in the description. And the two of those together are either $1,200 or $1,300. So the $700 combo is now beaten by the $1,200 stack. Fine. There's nothing wrong with the combo, but now I've sat with basically direct competition. This is, and I'm gonna try not to destroy my entire desk, a fully fledged, balanced out, AES in, RCA out, coaxial fiber, USB, power in the back, but also, no, it's just power in the back. Fuck, I gotta give the shit yell. Shit! You can't turn it off from the front. There's a, a slight uh, usability difference between this and the topping DX7 Pro, however. That had a remote control and Bluetooth. And this, this feels, because it's a, a art, a D, it's a DA, then like a weird space, art. Because this is not a topping, no Bluetooth, no remote control. This is a very much dedicated desk unit, which has the weirdest legs and feet, I'm gonna point them out. They basically have these metal rings, and I think they went, all right, we can't get the thing we wanted to just put five rubber feet in. And I kind of like the way it looks, and it works great. They've got the little safety tape here. I don't know if you took it apart. And I could tell you now from, from running it for a few hours, it's hot. It is a warm unit. The Topping DX7 does not get this warm. But the Topping DX7 does not sound like this. This is a four watt per channel out of the balance into 32 ohm amp. Uh, I feel like this unit is almost more about the amp than the DAC. Whereas the Topping DX7 Pro, when I kept that, I kept it because, oh, I get to use the Topping DAC, the balanced out. And I never really did. I kept it around, and then the D90 showed up, which was the more expensive solo DAC, and I'm like, oh, I'll use that. And now the A90's out, and that's like a dedicated headphone amplifier, and I'll use that. This is the best headphone combo I can recommend, besides the RME ADI-2. How's that? Because I've sat here, I literally had the DX7 Pro out and I packed it up and I decided now that I have the A90 and D90, I'm just gonna sell that. Th this, is, this, is, this would be another reason to sell the DX7 Pro. It's, let me unplug it. It is prettier by a long shot. We've got, uh, it comes in black or silver and this is the silver and I, it's the whole thing is a heat sink and the edges have this like, it goes up here and then it has a slight angle here, and it's symmetrical SMSL with your goddamn fucking SP200 shit. It's got an alum, it's got a beautiful, this feels more dedicated audiophile crazy blood than the toppings do. I mean, just look at it. Just, just I, I don't even, the fact that if you put the topping down on a table and you put this on a table and you walked away and you said, all right, price is right rules, how much does this cost and how much does that cost? The topping is like, oh, it feels like a $600 unit. 
this feels like a $1,400, $1,500 unit. I know that because I review these things and when I forgot how much this cost, because again, Hi-Fi Go was like, hey, we're gonna send you some stuff. And I just say yes. I'm not that sort of guy that's like obsessed. Like I need to know everything about it. Yeah, whatever. I'll put it on my table, I'll reuse it, I'll see how it goes, whatever. I forgot how much this cost. And I was literally pegging it at twice its price. Because it's got a screen, but it's not a crazy complicated. This is one of the simplest jack amp combos. And I'm not putting that as a negative. 4.4, .4, quarter inch, and then full balance four pin. You get a digital volume knob. You press the button. You have four things you can change. Well, five things if you count the volume. And that's it. It just tells you your input you're on. It tells you what the inside is. It's PCM currently at 44.1. The screen is actually really like quality. Usually these screens are a little bit. <laughs> fill me up. I'll fill you up in a second, baby. Yeah. Has it been that long? Hold on, I have to, uh... Oh wait, that's this phone. Apparently Pasta's house is filling with water. It's not even cold. Um, should I walk you through the functionality of the DAC? Because it's... Here's what it is. It's a headphone amp with no high-low gain. It has no adjustments for gain. You just... If you want it quieter, you just keep turning it down until it's quieter. I was running these blonde BLO5s at negative 60 decibels. When I put on these, it's about negative 40 decibels. And when I put on these, it's about negative 32 decibels. And like I said, it's four watts per channel balanced. And what is it unbalanced? It's about a quarter of that. Oh wait, I have the book. I have the book, everyone. I've read the book. There it is in Hi-Fi Go, available in black or silver. I really like the silver. So I want to show you this first, I guess, if I'm trying to get the, um, not many times will you get the full diagram of how the internals work, but they're really proud of this. So they're trying to show it off. This thing has a FIFO regenerator. I don't even know what that is, but it's got one and it shows the path of USB and the USB goes in here and goes to the USB to IS, I2S. And then it goes to a spitif dir to I2S, and then it goes to the selector where the optical and So I have my laptop hooked up so I can switch between either the USB cable into it or the fiber optic cable from her into it so I can compare the two. Uh, there is a slight difference. Slight. Slight. Don't, don't get me started on it. It could also be a slight volume difference because it's taking different paths through the digital architecture. Through this digital maze, it's got femtosecond isolators and clock recovery PLLs and... Oh, PLL, wait, PLL, that was on another thing. I forget what it is. Anyway, I'm going to switch to another page now. Because we have to talk about... Well, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Where were we? So, 1600 milliwatts at 32 ohm is what single ended is. And 4000 milliwatts at 32 ohm is what the balanced is. And then when you get all the way up to 600 ohm, single ended is 90 milliwatts, and then balance is 375 milliwatts. So that's actually pretty good. Total home run distortion, three zeros past the, the decimal place, 130 decibels negative weighted signal to noise ratio. It's just, the specs are all there. It weighs four kilograms, by the way. I'm gonna point that out. It feels quality. It feels more quality than the Topping DX7 Pro. Because I, I literally took a picture of this next to a bowl of soup from Qdoba. And someone in public Z reviews was like, eh, yeah, that's nice. But who would get that when the DX7 Pro exists? Me! I'd get this over the DX7 Pro. I very rarely need Bluetooth connectivity for, like, headphones. Like, I think that's, that's silly. If I'm sitting at a desk where this is available, I don't need the Bluetooth into it. If you're using it for... Uh, line outs or, or pre outs for speakers, that's a different story. But I mean, I could, I could give or take that. I, I, Bluetooth is usually just a portable on the go sort of thing. I'm not, I'm not going to require things to have it. The new Topping E30 DAC is like 130 bucks. No Bluetooth. Did I freak out? No. If you are specifically looking for a speaker amp, headphone amp with Bluetooth built in, then you sort of got to pay attention. Then you got to get more money into the DAC. Where was I? I was talking about things. So, it looks great. Headphone amp is powerful and warm. It's, it's not a sterile amplifier. I think the topping is a bit more sterile. That might mean more accurate. I don't fucking care. Zeos is here reviewing audiophile gear. Audiophiles, I've come to this realization. I actually like the audiophile um, sect a little more 
when the, a they're not pushing ten thousand dollar cables because fuck that, but when a company puts out a product and it actually sounds different. Like a lot of times they'll claim it sounds this, it's better because this. No, fuck, fuck all that. Just put out a product that doesn't sound sterile and lifeless and I'm happy. I listen all day to Italian reference balance things and tubes and the most clean and then the Germanist German things and then the class A row. I like variety in my ice cream. Right? I think a DAC should be very accurate and not fuck with the sound too much. Except when I get something like the Ion Next Saint Magic DAC and I start swapping op amps. And then it's like FPGA. And by the way, this is FPGA. Switchable FPGA. We got to go about the actual options this has. Because it's, it's unique in its simplicity and usability. And I think this could be like end-all DAC amp for many people watching this channel right now. Like if you're not willing to go for like a stack or a JDS Labs, I just got the new Element stack in and I haven't listened to it yet. But you know, that's still just a single ended. And well, that doesn't have Bluetooth either, but it's like, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be fucking delicious. That's the word I'm going with. I'm sure listening to that is going to be like just ch juggling down chocolate syrup and it's like, oh my God, sound. But this is that too. And this is that in one very fucking neat package. Like, this is the neatest looking... I'm not saying it neat like, like Weird Al's white nerdy neat. I'm like, this is clean and well put together. And it just feels like it should be way more money than it is. So here's our, our screen, which dims, by the way, automatically when you don't interact with it. As soon as you turn the volume, it brightens up. So our volume indicator is there. It goes all the way down to negative 99. Um, the digital volume control, by the way, is analog, according to that. According to that book, it is a digitally controlled analog volume. And I don't hear, like, the relays switching around like you, like you have on the big shit items. But I believe it. Because it's... There's something about the volume that it just... it just You could hear it when you're raising and lowering it. That it isn't just a digital squelch. So, mark that as a positive. Input selected is optical. PCM is what's being fed, 44.1 because we're on optical. If I switch from optical to USB, that'll go to 384 because this is using Wasapi Shared, which is different from Wasapi Push and Event. So that's what the laptop is set to. It's at the 384 32-bit, and it's just pushing that straight to here, so it's showing you that. Um, we scroll. You hit the button to get around to the approximately, that's it. It's source select, filter setting, sync setting, preamp, et cetera, et cetera, nothing. That's it. We just took the whole fucking tour. I love, I'm starting to just, I love complexity. I love the Army ADI too, because you could do so much with it. And a fucking mini DSP, you can just dig into it. But at some point, people watching my channel are just going, Zios, I'm just, I want to listen to music and I want very little, I just want the best thing. Can you hear the tone of my voice just go he's down? I just want I just want the best thing. Here you go. This, you can't get simpler than this. You pick your input. You pick your input, USB or optical or coaxial or um well AES no one I think is gonna be using. If you use AES, by the way, please say in the comments why you do. Because it's a very pro end thing of like it's a co basically a coaxial digital but slightly different and using an XLR, and I want to know who's using it. But it's better for long distance runs, I'm imagining. So you pick your input, then you go down here and you pick your filter. And you have the choice of, you ready? Slow, phase, sharp. That's it. Just three. Now, if I've discussed filters in the past and how I can't hear the difference, and I literally can't because they're over 20,000 hertz. It only affects the, the cutoff at over 20,000 hertz. So just pick one. Doesn't matter. You don't have like brick wall and anodot. Just slow, phase, sharp. I put on slow. I'm feeling slow today. That didn't sound right. The next option you have to play with, sync or A ASRC. Those, I will prick the manual back up and I will read for a split second. Excuse me, <clears throat> bedtime, let's see us. Okay, well, we're gonna pretend that you're my adorable daughter and you're going to sleep and I'm gonna read to you. Digital processing mode. Press the control knob three times. The on-screen digital processing mode will start to fresh. 
Turn the control knob and the display will rotate between sync and ASRC. When the desired digital processing mode is displayed, press the knob to confirm your selection. And then the only descriptions I have, and this is all I needed to know, were sync is fully FPGA based synchronous digital processing, like the AUNX8 Magic DAC, or ASRC, which uses the ESS built-in asynchronous SRC digital processing. So if we go back to this, basically all this whole fucking monstrous, this box here, you don't want to use that, you go to async and it goes right to the DAC, which is an ES9038 Pro. And I wouldn't have cared if it was like a switch that didn't make any sound difference. But I can actually actively hear a difference in the way sound is presented. That's like a fucking first. Because I could switch to an FPGA DAC and be like, all right, I think it's, yeah, okay. But I could just go one, two, three, click. And then the sound mutes and it comes back on and it's different. And you know what? I don't know which one I like more because there's, there's some, it actually moves the physical locality of sound around based on whether you're going through this whole FIFO regenerator with clock recovery, PLL, and the ISOs, buffers, and fem, femtosecond isolators, or bypass it all and go straight to the DAC and its own built-in thing, there's a fucking sound difference. That isn't a negative. That is a fucking positive. Because if you're getting a $700 DAC amp, you need to have very simple options that change the sound just so you could pick your liking. It's like the sound color mode in that fucking M200 DAC. That is confusing and scary because I can hear the differences, but they don't tell me what's happening. And it should just be like, whatever. This is literally changing the architecture it's using to create the sound and giving you the option in just two options, just two. I don't want 20 options, just want two. Just two options is fine. I prefer, and I, I don't know if it, it actually changes the sound on both optical and USB, which is sort of strange considering optical looks like it bypasses this entirely. Because, oh no, it goes up. Because Oh yeah, because it would go up and then it would go into the FIFA regenerator. That arrow points. I want to print out of this on my fucking wall. They should just print this on the top of this unit because it's super fucking interesting. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to, I haven't plugged a headphone into it. I'm going to plug a headphone into it. Oh no, we're not, I'm not going not to plug it into it. I haven't done yet. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Choose your input and it has just the right amount of delay before it goes away. I want to choose my input. Are you going to choose your input? Are you going to swap between this? Because as soon as you do, and you leave it alone, one, two, three, four, it's off. So it doesn't stay selected for too long, and it doesn't stay selected for too short where you can't make up your mind. That's a little detail that I, I'm, I'm just super fucking annoyed when it's wrong. Like I've had a couple of units where I hit the button, and you didn't hit it fast enough. You hit the button, I don't want, you didn't hit it fast enough. This is just as good as a good four seconds to like choose what I want to go through the filter, um, the ARC, I'm going to put it back to sync, which uses the FPGA. And then finally, and I changed something. So you have to go back preamp, pure DAC max level or headphone amp or head amp. It says head amp. So those are your ch three choices there. Cause you're either going to use it as a headphone amp. No, no, both, no, both just one or the other, which makes perfect sense. If you use it as a preamp, you have your choice of uh, fully balanced outputs or RCA outputs. Again, you have the four inputs here, the end. If you want to add Bluetooth, here's the thing. Um, they make the Bluetooth receivers that have like fiber optic or coaxial outputs. I think they're mostly fiber optic outputs, which would sucky because I like using optical for my computer. So you'd have to have two. But you could just add it as an input device. If you want to add Bluetooth, if you really want to. Although I highly recommend trying it with USB. I'm not a huge USB proponent. But this is like one of those DAC amps that you're going to get. And it's going to be it. You're going to be done. You're not going to go and have 19. Just, you're just going to be done. So when you switch between, like currently I'll set the volume for my preamp to 44. So let's say I had speakers hooked up to this. I actually had this in my living room for a while. And I was feeding this into the Emotiva monoblocks and then the Emotiva monoblocks into those triangle thetas. And that was just 
A-OK. -okay. And then I swapped to the uh, the cheaper unit to get that done, and then I ended up, I don't remember what I had hooked up to do the review, actually. Was it still this? I'll have to go back and watch. If there's a big silver box there, it was this. The problem with this in the living room is there's no remote. So using it as like a preamp control on in a living room doesn't work. But here on a desk, there on a desk, in an actual environment where you are going to be sitting in front of it to use it as a headphone amp and to control either a powered power amp or powered monitors, this is perfect. With a P. Perfect. Perfectly fine. Like better than fine. Like the DAC in it. I love the way this thing sounds because it doesn't sound so neutral. It doesn't sound wonky. That would automatically be a disqualification. It just sounds like it's a hot box and it is It is relatively warm. You could definitely keep your food, you, like I'm not burning my hand, but you could definitely keep like a sandwich, like right at the, not quite the cheese is melted all the way or not hasn't hardened. All, it's, it's, that's how I judge how my grilled cheese would stay if I put it on top of my $700 DAC amp. But, you get this if you're gonna, you, you can get it as just a headphone output. I, I fucking really like it. Let's plug it. In fact, now that we've, we've talked. So, I currently have it set to preamp and negative 44. We plug in the headphones. Uh, hold on. Uh, there we go. Nothing's playing. And I'm, by the way, Aeon Open X are fucking amazing. I've missed you, babies. And we got no sound because we're supposed to be using the preamps. It says preamps. So, we're gonna switch. One, two, three, four. Pure DAC. So now the outputs in the back are not variable. Now they're maximum level. So you would use that if you were feeding into another amplifier, another headphone amplifier, something else with its own volume control. You're just using this as a raw DAC. The end. Headphones after still in the front. Now if I switch, and it still says volume 39, although it's, of course that's the preamp. If we switch to, wait, one, two, three, pure level. Then it goes to zeros because you can't control the volume. There is one technical issue. When you're using this as a preamp or a pure level out DAC, the front headphone amp is not disabled. It's just not supposed to be sending signal. And you hear a hiss in your headphones and mostly on max level, you'll actually hear a little bit of the music. Like it's just bleeding over a little bit. I am not qualifying that as a fucking negative because I it does too many good things like that. That's somewhere in that weird design. There's just a slight leak because the amplifiers that are pushing out the back are also designed to push out the front. So I don't care if my head, if you leave your headphones plugged into this and you switch to pre out, they're gonna hiss and you might hear the music playing it like, like that's, that's as loud as it's got, that's maximum. So there's just like, it's got the semblance of like, is it playing? Maybe? So let's switch it back. So now that we've got it like loud, let's switch it back. The head amp automatically lowers the volume to negative 60 so you don't blow anything up. I'm afraid I can't help it. And ah. Uh, what are we in sync? Oh God, there's too many things pushing down. That's you, that's you doing David Bowie. Yeah, this is a, I would almost say, I wanted, I wanted just now to say a perfect entry level DAC amp. That's bullshit. Entry level means IFI uh, Zen DAC, which is $130. The IFI Zen DAC at $130 is amazing. You can work your way up from there to a million different combinations of, of, of THX amp and different DACs and different features and functions. But if you want none of it, if you want to take the next step up of a combination unit from like the low hundreds to the mid hundreds, $700 for this is a fucking bargain. Do I think the RME ADI 2 sounds better? No. I think the RME ADI-2 has way more options going for it. Like, oh my god, options. But I would not put the RME ADI-2 versus this, especially balanced output, I, I, I'd say it would be a straight draw. And then you got to deal with the fact that that is single-ended only, 
which has more power than this does single-ended. I don't know. I don't know if I'd pick one for. I don't have an Army ADI two here to compare, but I'm feeling like this would absolutely fight that thing. This would fight that. I never said the DX7 would fight that. This DX7 was doing its own thing. It was it was six hundred dollars here. This I believe is a better overall unit with just better sound. It just sent. This sounds 2020. This is a brand new thing that has a crazy ass architecture. I don't care about DSD. I don't care about anything. I'll use fucking 44.1 16-bit files through fiber optic all day and say this exact same thing. Which, by the way, I switched to optical because yeah, no, there's uh, uh, it's it's a. Uh, uh, other than the slight leak of signal when you're using it as a DAC output or pre out. It's flawless, has no flaws. It doesn't blow your headphones up because it really has resets the volume. It, oh, I'm sorry, it has a major flaw. The, vo the power switch is in the back. I hate you. But I mean, fucking fuck. I could fucking yell, I could just yell about it. When I don't yell about it, it means the unit has provided enough joy that I am willing to fucking overlook a flaw. And honestly, tell me honestly, folks, where would you like to see a power button on this? What, what part of this face, this beautiful fucking face, do you want to disgrace with a power button? I mean, I guess you could do the digital knob here. Like, hold it and have it come on, but it's just, it's just, uh... You long? Oh, baby, I am long. No lock, boom, done, on. I fucking love this thing. Like, this is like a solidly desk, I might put it on my desk. Like, it gets hot. Like, I'm sure it's drawing watts right now. In fact, we could see. What are we, what are we looking at? 37 watts? All right, I'm going to shut it off again. 29, 27. 10 watts? 21. There we go. 22. 15 watts, roughly, it pulls. I'm okay with that. I am completely okay with that. The other headphones I brought out, let me put this back on, are of course my Neumanns. I was either gonna bring out the Neumanns or the Fidelio X2s, but I'm actually using the Fidelio X2s to, I'm gonna finish up reviewing that other Fio portable player. I forget which one it is, M137 Pro, I don't fucking care. So these get to come out. And obviously it disappeared here because it's USB and it has to figure out that it's back. And then I'm going to switch it, wait, USB, yeah, no, I have no, I have no issue with the way this sounds, and it sounds exactly like it's $700. Look at the, this is good for me, because I, it means I can just recommend, I like being able to have Plain, like there's no one that's gonna get this and question what settings to use. You got four choice, three choices with the, the, the filter? Slow phase sharp, slow phase sharp, yeah. You have three settings in the filter, you're not gonna be able to hear a difference. Sync and async, I'd say varies per headphone, per source and per song, what I prefer. And you could just play with it. It's a, it's a free option to play with. And some people want even simpler. They want no options. I, I find that's the case a lot of the time. Is people just want, I don't want options, Zios. But it's just, it's just, you either want to run it through that whole gaggle of shit, or you don't. And sometimes, just the music just sounds wider and, and further back. Like, it doesn't attack your head as much when you put it in the synchronous mode. You put it to async, and it's sort of like, you could, the fact that you could actually tell a difference based on an architecture change of the sound is fantastic. It's about fucking time, because I'm tired of options that just don't do anything, or they are literally called sound color, and they just, you know, we're just gonna do shit, not tell you what we're doing. That's another reason I like the RME ADI too, is because sound color is up to you, because you literally get fucking parametric EQs that you can start dialing in. I want a little bit more bass here, but I want the Q value like that, I wanna have like a spike. So you color the sound on your own, and the RME ADI too. this, this just changes architectures. It changes how it makes the ice cream. And it is beautiful, creamy ice cream that comes out of here. I, I, 
like that, like that combo, I feel like the soul of this combo here ended up somewhere in here, but also has like a fully balanced pre-out and everything. So it's like, and that's actually more expensive. That's five and three, and this is only seven. So when you really start balancing out, it's sort of a bargain. <laughs> it's sort of a bargain. It's, it's, it's 700 fucking dollars. It's not really sort of a bargain. But if you're, I know too many people that have joined this fucking game. I just got part of this game. It's not a game. It's a, it's a, it's a drudge to try to, f I, my job, Zeos's job, what's your job, Zeos? My job is to try to convince you to stop spending money after you find happiness. Too many people start just into this game and now they have HD800s and they had to get obviously a, a $5,000 tube amp to run the HD800s and then they had to get the cable because it's really annoying. And then, st find the thing that makes you happy and there are some shortcuts you can take. I find Zendac, that could be the most best amp DAC you ever needed. This could be the most best DAC amp you ever needed. This, this fucking nightmare. I don't want to wish this on anyone. It's fun, but I get to write all this stuff off and I don't think you do. So I need to calm you down. If you want a solid fucking DAC amp, like a holy shit, Zeos is right. I don't need to buy anything else. Just buy this and be done with it. If you're looking to play the little baby upgrade game, there's we, we we can go on forever and we will because this channel ain't going nowhere and people keep making shit and they keep sending it to me so you just be prepared for the long haul be prepared for the fucking long haul i personally know why i'm here it's to try to save you money and i'm doing real bad at my job but at least if you bought this for seven you didn't go and buy a five and then another four three hundred dollars now and then that's three hundred dollars then you got to get the chip and this is a fucking wallpaper Wallpaper. I don't know. She got weird fingers, but there's other reasons I picked it. So, so that's great. Download that in the description. Use Sauce Now or IQDB to look up the original artist if you want to message them, support them. Uh, link to every wallpaper that I've ever used in my Patreon or Subscribe Star. Those who support this channel, they're linked in a pinned comment below. Hi Fi Guides and Hi Fi Guides Forum will have a post about this. I don't know how many people have the Aquila too. Which, isn't that a submarine? Isn't the, is that an Achilles? Aquila? Akuma? I, I like submarine movies, and it definitely sounds like Aquila 2 would be like a submarine type. But uh, yeah, this fucking thing. So, Patreon subscribers are $5 a month. You get to see these reviews early. If Hi Figo runs out of stock, it's because every one of my patrons bought one, or everybody on Subscribestar bought one. Ask me any questions you want on platform through the messaging apps built into Patreon and Subscribestar. I will get back to you. Sometimes it takes up to 10 days. Like, I am either lazy or busy. Or I just, I lo I've opened a couple questions on there and they're literally books and I'm like, and then I lose the all enthusiasm. However, if you don't want me to lose your enthusiasm, please feel free to join the $10 tier where I will um, answer your questions on my phone with my voice, which is a whole lot easier than trying to type shit out. I hate typing out answers. I'm this guy. I'm the, what do you need? Well, you need the Aquila too. You know, just, it's just simple. Just put it on async, not sync, doesn't matter. You're fucking going to love it. That's my answer. Not instead of, well, and, 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 I hate typing. Um, so yeah, that's a $10 tier, $10 benefit. There's higher benefits, but we haven't installed them yet because we're not ready to send packages to each other here in COVID land. So, I mean, God bless you if you support them on there. However, I also forgot to mention the yard sale, which I don't think this will be in, but the DX7 Pro, which is currently for sale, I think it's on drop now for like $560. That will be in the yard sale. My old one, the original one that I reviewed, along with several other things, including speakers and daps and everything else. First of the 10th of every month, everyone who's a $5 patron or subscriber, or subscriber or higher gets to participate. You name your own price. I ship free to the content of the United States. Half shipping internationally. Oh, no, it's probably not. I probably already did that episode, so I'm not going to say it because in June I'm doing the Thetas. And I really wish I would have known that before, and then I could have announced in these videos. So yeah, thank you for stopping by. Um, I'm hoping to make your choices clearer. The problem is I've done like a 1,400 videos, so like if you've seen any of those, you're like, you're real confused. This is the newest video. This is today's video. Whenever this comes out, this is my choice for DACAM combo. Above bottom of the line and not up to like the crazy plus thousand dollar stuff. Like this is per it's a perfect choice. Just get this and then stop watching these videos. 
and be happy for the rest of your life. Like just, just to be happy. Just, I just want you to be happy.